the cousin of my J Dub homie, a Hawks talking squawk, sore back Saturdays, J Dub story. Now yesterday I uh, recorded a video about honey stripping my homie's Nad Rogers fiance, the girl that he wanted to marry, but. She didn't look at him that way. She didn't want to marry him. And, you know, that's the video I uploaded yesterday. Well, in that video, I had also mentioned his cousin Tasha, who already had an issue with me. And being in her feelings, tried to drive a wedge between me and my homie Narraj and was the one that actually went lying to him about me and his former fiance being <clears throat> hugged up, booed up or whatever at a bowling party. <clears throat> now Tasha's was really his cousin through marriage. His dad, the infamous schemer and scammer J James Hearns, his sister had married Tasha's pop. As I previously stated, Tasha and her family were also from Philadelphia. They were from the Olony section. So anyway, I met Tasha through Naraj. It was about the spring of 2002. Naraj was down in, uh, Florida with his family visiting them because as I stated they had lived in Florida for a few years before Tasha moved back to Philadelphia so while they were down there Dad Roger called me telling me how nice it was down there how he had met a few J-Dub friends down there and wanted to go back down there sometime and wanted me and Sheaf to go down there with him and I was like alright cool so his cousin he had put Tasha on the phone like kind of introduced us through the phone so you know I mean she was cool we was chopping it up or whatever I was feeling the chemistry even though I didn't know what she looked like remember this is 2002 this was before camera phones and social media and all of that so I didn't know really what she looked like but all I could go by was what Narraj was telling me and he was like yeah she looks good or whatever I mean that's my cousin I'm not looking at her like that but she's not an ugly girl or whatever and because you know the voice could be deceiving. You could have a real attractive voice, but look like her. But anyway, that wasn't the case. So me and Ta Tasha, we start chopping it up on the phone here and there. You know, even after Nair Roger and his family came back, like we would talk on the phone here and there or whatever. And she was always talking about being homesick and wanting to come back to Philly or whatever. But she just had to be able to get some time off of work or whatever, whatever. So remember this is the this is going into the summer of 2002. This was actually the summer that I got baptized or whatever, you know, that illegal baptism, which the brother baptized me the wrong way or whatever. But we was talking on the phone here and there, and, you know, I, we was feeling one another, but it was, she was feeling me more on her end, talking about marriage or whatever. I'm like, whoa, whoa, like, I, it, I'm not even looking to do all of that I'm not looking to get married and all that like we cool and 
we can hang out or talk or whatever. You know, that was always a thing that bugged me with the J-Dubs. Like, we talking and already you're talking about seriously committing and dating to get married. Like, nah, nah. Like, I, I wasn't even 19 yet. I was a couple months shy of turning 19 and she was about to turn 18. You know, I was, I'm a Libra, she was a Leo, so Libra and Leos get along for the most part anyway. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my Leos. But I was like, it's not even though at that time, like, I like you, you like me, let's just keep it at that and go from there. Like, all that planning for the future shit, like, nah, I'm cool. So, you know, I mean, we was talking or whatever. She came up to Philly. She was actually there at the uh, convention when I got baptized. She was kind of in her feelings, though, because she seen all of the other sisters that were into me, like all of my other female friends or whatever. So, the weekend that I got baptized, she... Had a little attitude, but was trying to play it off as best she could. But I'm like, sis, I rock with you. You rock with me. Let's just keep it at that. Like, I'm not with the exclusive. I'm not with the exclusive stuff. You know what I mean? Let's just say you're one of my main squeezes and just be content with that. So, you know, we was messing around, whatever. Yeah, we got busy in the sheets. And it's funny because every time we would do something, she would start feeling bad talking about, oh, we need to repent so we can have Jehovah's forgiveness so we won't be destroyed at Armageddon. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. But I said, you bet not go running your mouth to the brothers because I'm going to deny it. You know, I'm going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, she never went that far. But whenever we would mess around or whatever, she would start feeling bad. And the next thing you know, she was like, oh, maybe we shouldn't talk anymore or take a break but in reality she was filling these other uh, guys you know what I mean which didn't bother me because like I said we weren't exclusive but she would use these other guys to try to call herself making me jealous or rubbing them in my face like I care and see like every other week it was another guy that she was feeling talking about I wouldn't be interested in nobody else if we lived closer. I'm like, sis, you making this more of an issue than what it is. I don't care about none of your other guy friends just like you shouldn't care about any of my other female friends. It is what it is. Now, I would go down there whenever I had a chance. Now, at this time, I was working at the airport. So, I had a few uh, peoples that worked for the airline. So, I would get buddy passes. Not to mention, my mom's husband at the time also worked for the airlines at the airport. And we could get free flights or whatever. So... I could fly out whenever I wanted. So I was going down there maybe once or twice a month, hanging out for a couple of days that would just fly back. Usually I would go down on the weekend. I might fly down Friday night, then fly back Sunday night. Because when I worked at the airport, my I had a Monday through Friday gig. So I was off on the weekend. So a couple of weekends out the month, I would go down there. Sometimes I would go 
to Miami or I would go to Atlanta and she would drive to Atlanta and meet me and we would hang out or whatever. And of course, being a hoops head, I would go to games whenever I was down there. And it was a couple that she do down there, a witness couple. They was real nice. They will open up their home and let me stay with them whenever I was down there. You know, but that really lasted throughout the duration of 2002. I would say from June to like maybe December. Like by December, like she just kind of wore out her welcome. She was always making the issue out of my other uh, female friends. Now, there was a girl named Maya. Maya is also from Philly and they weren't friends. Her and Tasha weren't friends. But before Tasha had moved to uh, Florida, they, uh, they were both talking to the same brother. Like, I think Tasha was the main girlfriend, but then the guy started talking to Maya on the side and eventually kind of eased Tasha out of the picture. So, of course, Tasha didn't like Maya, and she found out that me and Maya was tight and was hanging out or whatever, so she made an issue out of that. Also, Tasha and Maya had a mutual friend. They also had a mutual friend. And Tasha used to always tell her friend, you shouldn't be friends with Maya, blah, blah, blah. Then eventually, Tasha and Maya's mutual friend started hanging around in our circle when we would all start going like the bowling and skating parties and different gatherings or whatever. And Tasha just started making an issue out of everything on top of trying to throw other guys in my face like I cared it wasn't the fact that I cared but the fact that she kept doing it and trying to be disrespectful like oh these guys bring more to the table than you or we have better chemistry or whatever just saying a little underhanded disrespectful shit so it got to the point when I'm like look man I ain't doing this no more. I stopped going down there. I ceased contact with her. I put a, a block on the calls where she couldn't get in contact with me or none of that. Now, I remind you, this is around December of 2002. So a few months later, it's, it's like, uh, it's around April. And I got a new phone by then. Only thing was, I never put her number on the block list on my new phone. So now this is my grandmom's home going. You know what I mean? She ascended to the grand ancestral realm. So it's after the services and everything, me and some of the family, we're still over my pops because this is my dad, my paternal grandma so we're over my pops and it's, it, ha it was also a meeting night and my pop he lived right around the corner from the old kingdom hall we was going to so you know I changed and everything into my my uh kingdom hall get up you know what I mean I took another shower and got dressed into my suit and tie and I'm about to leave out for the beating, I get a call from a Florida number and I'm like, hold up. And I'm like, oh, damn, I never put this chick back on the block list. So I ain't even answer the phone. But she kept calling and sending a bunch of messages. And then she left a voicemail and in a voicemail, she's talking real greasy. Like, yeah, that's why we not together. I had to put you on the shelf and you ain't got nothing on my other male friends and just talking real disrespectful. Now, I remind you, 
I'm already, you know what I mean, grieving my grandma. Me and my grandma, we are real close. She is also a Libra scale. You know what I mean? Shout out to Grandma Hawk and soaring up there with the grand sisters. But anyway, I'm already grieving and all that. And for this dumbass bitch to start playing on my phone, running her mouth, y'all went all the way in on her. I went all the way in on her. Snapping on her. Then my older cousin, she comes out like, cousin, what's wrong? And I'm telling her, my cousin gets on the phone and starts cussing her out. Like, bitch, I don't care. Will you at? I'll come down there and fuck you up, blah, blah, blah. And that was the end of that. She ain't never called my phone again. Now, fast forward a year later, around the time when I honey stripped Ariel from that Raj, she had just so happened to move back to Philly. So her sole purpose was to try to drag my name through the mud. She would tell Naraj that I wasn't a real friend and I was always talking trash about him and making fun of the way he talked. Like, ah, now I did do that, guilty. But everybody made fun of the way he talked. But she was just out to try to smear my name and She's the one that ran and told him that me and Ariel were all booed up at the bowling alley. And as I stated in yesterday's video, I ain't never boo up with no broad in public back then. I only started doing that when Queen came into the equation. But that was her sole purpose to try to smear my name. And it's funny because that same summer of 2004, after she tried to drive a wedge between me and Nara, she called herself trying to make amends with me. We was all at a, uh, at a party out in Delaware. You know, it was a J-Dub party, but it wasn't your typical gathering. It was more like a party. She called us so trying to make amends with me there and like, I'm back in Philly, you know what I mean? Maybe we can hang out sometime or whatever. I was like, nah, I'm good. I said, you had your chance. You fucked it up. Then you went running your mouth. You know what I mean? I'm like, we could be cool, we could be cordial. If I see you, we can speak, you know what I mean? How you doing, whatever. Chop it up briefly, but that's as far as it's going to go. Next thing I know, less than a few months later, she was just fellowshipped and just fell off the map. And I never heard of her again. But anyway, that was the story of Tasha, the homie Nad Rogers' cousin, this was a little Soreback Saturdays Hawks Talking Squawk. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content. Hawk out.